Now to the COVID update. I can advise that overnight WA has recorded two new local cases of COVID-19. The cases are a 20-year-old male backpacker and a 24-year-old woman who lives in the same household. We believe they are linked to the current Delta backpacker outbreak, but investigations are ongoing. The backpacker is not vaccinated, but the woman is. They are being moved into hotel quarantine today. They are believed to have been infectious in the community and as such, new exposure sites will start to appear. So far, that is limited to the Audi in Cannington at 6 p.m. on the 29th of December. Specific times and additional sites will be released publicly as soon as they are available. It's important that we keep checking the exposure sites daily and follow the health advice against each site as they are regularly updated as new information comes to hand. And don't forget to check in on Safe WA. With a low caseload, high vaccination rates and appropriate public health measures, we are confident we can remain on top of this outbreak. As of this morning, 779 close contacts in total have been identified, 23 of whom are yet to be tested. Of the 23 yet to be tested, just four were patrons from the Mess Hall event. In addition, 160, uh, one, sorry, in addition, 1,635 casual contracts, contacts have now been identified, with 219 yet to be tested. WA Health are looking at a pop-up testing clinic at Backpacker Hostels, as we know they are a group at risk. In regards to the case of the Quarantine Hotel Security Guard yesterday, 14 close contacts have been identified, 11 have tested negative, two results are pending and one is yet to be tested. 27 casual contacts have been identified, 19 negative, three pending and five yet to be tested. Investigations are ongoing into how the infection occurred. At present, there's no evidence to suggest any PPE breach on the part of the guard and we expect genomic sequencing to be completed tomorrow night. We have to expect that this could be the first sign of Omicron in our community. While we are not out of the woods yet, given the challenges of the backpacker cluster and the new cases, these are still encouraging numbers. And they give us confidence to make to take the next steps forward based on the health advice. As a result, from 6am tomorrow, the public health restrictions around seated consumption only and dancing will be lifted. However, due to the ongoing concerns, the indoor mask requirements will remain in place until at least 6pm Friday. On Friday, we will review the situation based on the latest health advice and make a decision on whether the indoor mask requirement can be lifted or if it needs to be extended. As I said, all other current elevated restrictions, seated consumption requirements, nightclubs, dancing and music festivals will be removed. This is obviously a great relief to venues, artists and suppliers, as well as anyone who missed out on a dance on New Year's Eve. But in order to ensure that these things can happen safely, Following the successful trial at the Perth Cup on January the 1st, we will now extend proof of vaccination requirements to high-risk venues and events. These high-risk venues and events include nightclubs, music festivals and major events of more than 500 patrons where mask wearing will also be required outdoors. Pubs, taverns, hotels and special facility licences with more than 500 capacity or these specific licensed venues that trade after midnight. Events with an occasional liquor licence and the Crown gaming floor. The proof of vaccination requirement will be ongoing. This is where we were going already under our safe transition plan, but we are now confident to bring it forward. Proof of vaccination is a shared responsibility, shared between the venue and the patron. If a patron attempts to sneak into a venue, the patron will be liable they will face an on-the-spot fine or possibly imprisonment. The venue, will also, the venue also has an obligation to take reasonable steps to ensure that all patrons and staff entering their premises are double-dose vaccinated. Anyone, venue or patron, flagrantly flouting the laws will face the consequences, but this is the best way that we can ensure these higher-risk venues and events are safe. There are a few ways attendees can show proof of their vaccination in both digital or paper-based form along with their proof of ID. The quickest way to get proof of vaccinations is using your Medicare online account through MyGov or through the Express Plus Medicare mobile app. 
If you can't get proof online, your vaccination provider, such as a GP or pharmacist, can print your immunisation history statement for you. Acceptable forms of showing proof of your COVID-19 vaccination include the Express Plus Medicare app, your COVID-19 digital certificate on MyGov, along with an acceptable form of ID, your COVID-19 digital certificate from MyGov stored in a smartphone wallet, along with an acceptable form of ID, a hard copy of your certificate, along with an acceptable form of ID, a digital or hard copy of your immunisation history statement, along with an acceptable form of ID. There is more information online at wa.gov.au on how to do this, but my strong advice to every vaccinated West Australian is to do this as soon as possible so that you're not doing it in line for an event in the future. WA's new app, which encompasses proof of vaccination and Safe WA, will be available next week, which will provide a more secure and efficient way to show your proof of vaccination. But it will still require you to do these steps, like having the certificate on your MyGov account, so it's best to get started now. And if you're not vaccinated, you should walk to, into a clinic or make an appointment at a pharmacy or GP today and get vaccinated. Not being vaccinated means that you will miss out. But it does mean that these events and these events and these venues will be much safer. This approach strikes the right balance to help us move forward safely through the pandemic. While the variants may change, the lessons of COVID stay the same. The more people do the right thing by each other, the better the outcome is. The more people who come forward for testing, the more confident we can be that we are on top of this outbreak. The more people who follow the measures means we can have lighter measures in the future. And the more people who get vaccinated means the people around them are safer, especially when they're in high risk settings. Doing the right thing by each other is the reason for our success in WA. In 2022, it remains just as important.